beautiful people and welcome to New Earth Podcast. I'm absolutely delighted to have with me today, Tim Wild. Welcome, Tim. Hiya, Sarah. Thank you for inviting me on. Well, it was it was just wonderful to meet you in Portugal on the 22nd of October. What a powerful event that was. I'm sure you've got lots to say about that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's the 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 I was talking about kind of the the actual date on the, the 22nd. I mean, it, it it there's been so much going on this year. Um the 22nd was kind of it's almost like the white the the wild card or the joker in the pack because if you think about all of the other dates that we usually expect very high frequency energies on they're associated with the equinoxes the the solstices the lion's gate all of these new and you kind of like you're pre-prepared for it a little bit but this one was just that it was it was like a designated I think the the words that were given to me designated light package on a date that we all suddenly realised that we've been preparing for all year and what wow it was uh it was off the charts and um you use the word designated light package you know and literally that was your experience you know yeah. that, that downloading and anchoring very powerful I think it was eleventh dimensional light wasn't it that you were working it was. With? I mean, I've, I've in, in the promo, um, in, in the videos and the, the wording that Diana Cooper sent out, um, we, we all said a little bit in advance kind of thing. And I mentioned that the, the Intergalactic Council had kind of been fine tuning me all year. But I realized when I looked deeper into the energies and, and, and how far back this actually goes and my, it's almost like my self training light capacity mission you can say that say that when you've had a few beers uh, <laughs> that that all began kind of in about 2003 2004 so I've been really kind of pushing my boundaries to what I can hold and what I can anchor um, for a long period of time and even with all of that preparation it still took me um into a, a total state where i had to repair afterwards um the, the the if you listen to the videos and everything the actual the 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 current of the helios light as it passed through me um rearranged everything within my within my kind of like divine lines and the meridians and highlighted a very a, a, like a, a big spot in my sacral chakra um that that needed rectifying um, my hips swelled up and I had to go straight away to the chiropractor and oh. when I walked through the door he was he took one look at me and like what have you done I mean he's used to me turning up with kickboxing injuries and um usually when you've got a a symptom like that a physical visible symptom on the body you can associate it with a spine injury so he said you look like you've you've um traumatized one of your discs or herniated because yeah. that's what it usually looks like. So I kind of lay down and got the poking and the prodding and the, the moving around. And I had full mobility in my hip. So it's like, that's that's not that's not a spine injury. That's something else. And this particular chap that I go and see, Lawrence, it's a karma life in Wimborne. He's a sorcerer, not a chiropractor. So, so amazing with all his energy work. Um, energy, he, he can test whether it's physical, emotional or cosmic. And there was no physical or emotional. It was all all the muscle tests came back as cosmic. So that that was yeah. suddenly realized what had actually happened. And obviously you were anchoring that light through you. But, you know, we were we mm. were all doing that to a lesser degree. You know, so I think a lot of people I, I, I set up a Facebook group, group raising the frequency of the world. Um, yeah. And it's for people that were, you know, hooked in with this event or are interested in, in raising the frequency. And, and, and loads of people have been experiencing similar symptoms, you know, physical unwellness. Um, I myself felt, for me, it wasn't so physical. It was more emotional. I felt really raw afterwards. And I'm Absolutely. still feeling that a little bit. I think it's affected my nervous system. Um, you know, that's, yeah. that's the impact it's had on me. Um, so I've, I wonder if you could talk about that. And I'd also be really interested to hear, you know, what the training was that you feel you've been through to prepare to hold this high frequency light. 
because presumably you know you're human you have weak spots you know and that this, yeah. this was what was highlighted you know with this this yeah. sacral experience it's um the, it was interesting the wording prior to the event because diana used very specific wording for each of us saying we are the only people on the planet who are able to anchor that frequency and at that at the time it sort of i, I felt a little bit taken aback by that and also there were people out there who messaged me and said of course you're not the only person that can anger a helios frequency and i still don't think i am now but the what what she actually meant from that information was given to her that i was the only person who was able to cope with the immediate after effects of the anchoring and what made it it, what made it doable was the fact that everybody like yourself and your beautiful group got involved so it, it, this this was a full-blown team effort and this is the first time that I've really seen something that's made my heart smile so much is so many people all focused and dedicated on one on one operation now if we can do that regularly and focus on things that we need to be focusing on like changing the alchemy of situations around the world we can achieve what we're setting out to achieve incredibly quickly it just seemed to me to be a sign of things to come and it was beautiful it's really really interesting and you know the heart energy at the event and and certainly holding this group energy it's been so beautiful it's i felt a little bit tearful actually when you were saying how how it how it's moved like this because people have been sharing their stories you know sharing their crystal grids sharing the the orbs and light you know, like beings in the photographs, um, yeah. referencing their stories. You know, there was a beautiful story about one boy that was being bullied, a teenager, and mm. he watched this and he felt more authority in himself. And without Absolutely. saying or doing anything, the dynamics changed, you know, and mm -hmm. these are the kind of shifts that are happening within people. Um, so that's it's amazing. just really, really beautiful. So, so thank you so much for everybody that's been involved and, and also for yourself oh. for holding space for such beauty, really. Um, well, thank you. It's, in it's... it's interesting, though, because, you know, when you mentioned in terms of people contacting you, saying you're not the only person that can hold this, mm. I had a lot of that prior to the event because I was promoting it and I had a lot of this. And it seemed to kind of raise to the surface um, this kind of energy as well. And my feeling yeah. was that that was what was being cleared as oh, well. Oh, absolutely. It's um, ultimately that particular package of my, I mean, there were, there were four of us and thousands and thousands of people assisting with the crystal grids. But when I received that particular template, the Helios template, it's very specific. So the... I mean, I think we can all agree that the masculine template on this planet has been pretty corrupted for quite a long period of time. In fact, we've spent 10,000 years in 3D from the fall of Atlantis and the whole learning plane of planet Earth in the third dimension has been ruled by masculine dominated ego. It's been like the polar opposite of what what it should be. There's been no balance. It's all been going in one direction. So to rectify that, that is is quite a big thing and and well, i've always i've always noted and many others have noted during live classes and workshops say you've got a hundred people five years ago any five there would only be five blokes in the audience and the chances are they've been dragged along by the missus and they're like they're sat there like this <laughs> and by the end of the day they're 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 soaking it all up like everybody else but what i'm seeing now is a huge rise in divine masculine souls stepping forwards it hasn't been a safe space for us to do so really until now because there's been so much unbalanced energy so much trauma so many things that need to be rectified and this the the helios gold print that came through is a it's a it's a clear it, it's a clear start it's a restart for and you, you've just really got my attention with what you said about that young man who saw it and stepped into yes. his authority Amazing. this is what the package contains Yay. it contains the energies of the divine masculine warrior and and in order for for all of the men on this planet to step into their higher roles 
it has to be done within that heart centered frequency. It can't have the ego template that existed on before because all that's got to go as we move into these higher frequencies. There's so much that we're doing in such a short space of time. It becomes, it becomes quite mind boggling when you think of all of the moving parts that are happening in this 20 year window. <laughs> it's, it's quite incredible. And, and yeah. thank you for mentioning that because that was something that I tuned into to bring up this, this bullying incident. And but I hadn't yeah. made the connection, but this masculine feminine balancing, you know, I, this is new words podcast. And for me, it's ultimately it's going to be about bringing that divine masculine and divine feminine into balance but at the moment it's about firstly the rise of the divine feminine because that's been suppressed and the yeah. balancing of the masculine um but within the, the women as well because you know that warrior energy we need that as well <laughs> yeah you know like I'm I'm um I'm a international best of the people's health alliance and mm. you know it is about that that speaking up, that that stepping into our authority, which we yeah. haven't really had the role mod models. We've always handed it over. You mm. know, we've looked at authority outside of ourselves, and it's that reclaiming. So thank you. You know, that's that is so important. You know that, and that's what was mirrored in that beautiful young man. That that I'm I'm really happy that you told me about that because that's whenever you do something, whenever whenever we engage in spiritual work it is always i mean we should trust what we do but it is still nice to hear that the universe is giving you like well you want some verification here's the perfect example and you've just done that this morning so thank you it's um our sovereignty our 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 authority has been handed over to those that um have no good intentions for this planet for a long period of time and we're now reclaiming that every single person that kind of unplugs from the matrix you know, I, I, I saw it back in 2020 becoming sad and deflated like one of those helium balloons at a party there's always one balloon that goes down and it, and it looks like a raisin by the end of the party kind of thing well that's kind of what the matrix is looking like as each of us unplug remove our energy step into our authority and our sovereignty but for divine feminine in particular it's been a massive journey to reclaim that authority and that power because if you think about where we've been for ten thousand years being a woman and opening your mouth got you into a lot of trouble and so all of a sudden to work through that fear and to reclaim that sovereignty it's it's i can see so many people jumping on that ship with great enthusiasm it's 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 really fantastic. amazing yeah i i personally had to work through a lot of past life stuff to be able to kind of have a public profile as it were because there was yeah. a lot of fear around that and um i mean that leads into something else that i'd like to touch upon um mm. this this idea of you know revisiting our past lives our ancestry to mm. um heal but then, you know, bringing that back to the present yeah. to bring in the gifts, you know, to, you know, to, to, to not get stuck in all that, that, that kind of past life stuff. You know, it feels very important, this anchoring here now. And that's something that I really felt in the event. You know, it was yeah. very much, you know, there was an Atlantean connection, which perhaps you'd like to talk about as well. But yeah. it felt very present. You know, we, it wasn't about sort of reminiscing in in any kind of a way. Wallowing in the A-cash. <laughs> um, what, what we're doing here and now is incredibly important. It's very specific. I mean, I've I've since Portugal, I've done I've done two more presentations, a beautiful weekend in Hamburg, which was all about Atlantis, and another one just on the Sunday in Emsworth. That's my last in-person presentation of the year. So it's been all about the Atlantean energies and the connection. So when, when I'm working with those energies and people are kind of identifying or they're remembering or they're connecting to their Atlantean selves or their lifetimes, one of the things I've always impressed is that not to get too sucked into that. Okay, because, you know, we could all be like wander around with one foot in Atlantis and one foot in the present day, but that doesn't serve our current trajectory. We've got to be present. We've got to be here and now. What I tend to think is the best thing to do is to reach in, grab what we need, 
that sometimes comes with memories and feelings and and the whole bag of activations and come and bring it back to the present moment because we're not that ascended master and we're not that person or this person now we're we're us you know i'm tim wild and I, I i i live here in the present day kind of thing and that that that's the way it is and some people were saying well i've got no recollection of my atlantean life I've got no connection to it at all and i feel that we get given what we what we need on a need to know basis by our higher selves so you're not going to get given something which is just a total distraction you know it might be a nice memory it take you back into the time and the place and you're very comfy there but there's nothing in it there for you that serves your pathway you're going to get given what you need so some people might not need that atlantean reconnection they might need their lemurian roots or they might need their star seed codings and it's all it's all very particular for the individual yeah i love what you're saying there because it helps to um counteract any ego you know because um it's very interesting, you know, with all this stuff, because, you know, and I've brought this up in my podcast before, but I would like to hear your take on it. Yeah. Um, You know, when we're tuning into this stuff, you know, the, my understanding is that, that, that when we go back to source, you know, anything that's unresolved in us goes back to that cosmic pool. Yeah. So therefore you know anything we're bringing through into this lifetime and rendering potentially it's cosmic fragments it might not even be our own life it might be something that mm. we've inherited as it were in this lifetime yeah. in order to um learn the lessons and our soul for our soul path so if we attach over attached to it you know there's this potential to um you know to to, to get ego around that so I love yeah. what you're saying, you know, to bring the gifts in and, and you know, the, the the resonance, but not necessarily the attachment. It's very easy to get attached. I mean, my, my the first information that I ever received about my current pathway was in 2008 and Archangel Michael turned up in my bedroom while I was meditating. And um, I've just been through a huge life change and he presented me with the blue star seal. And then proceeded to give me all of this information about how I was a high priest in Atlantis and how I was going to have kind of a key role in the future ascension process. And all of this information was incredibly overwhelming at the time. I mean, I literally blew a fuse a little bit later on, about four years down the road. Um, it it was time to get my boots on and go to work. Basically, I got a visit from Serapis Bay who said, right, all of that information that you received from Archangel Michael um it's now extremely relevant for what you're doing get out there kind of thing and and that that was that was my that was my marching orders basically so in uh, i've investigated who i was and my past life roles and and just enough for me to know why i'm doing what i'm doing now and to assist me with bringing through what i need to bring through but it's not a hang up of mine in any way shape uh, or form no, it's, it, and you it can feel that perfect. in your being. You can feel that in your being, that groundedness, and you know, oh, bringing through what needs to without getting attached. Yeah. So thank you so much because that's a really amazing example for everyone. Because oh, there you. is so much that we can draw through. You know, like I had an, a beautiful experience. I, um, it was a recent podcast actually. Um, someone I was chatting with, Peter Smith. He, he helped me um reconnect with home, something I've okay. always struggled with. Um, hmm. being earthed I do a lot of <laughs> to literally plug myself in because otherwise yeah I'm why did earth. I sign that contract <laughs> yeah. yeah so um anyway the connection with home with me was serious mm. and um it's it's really helped me you know it's really yeah. it's 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 beautiful you know it's really really beautiful and um you know that was actually really necessary for me to know that and understand that connection um, I think, so I think there's really powerful journeys that we can make here. Mm, very much so. Now you've 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 really touched on something quite important there. I mean the the home connection. Um, just recently, it's become very apparent that there's there's a lot of us down here who are all kind of waking up to our master potential. I mean, the original numbers that Archangel Michael gave me for 
people that walk through the ascension gateway are six billion so that's a number that activates and wakes up over the 20 year period between the cosmic moment and 2032 it does leave a shortfall of people that are probably going to decide to move on and continue to learn in 3d god knows why but you know that at the end of the day their soul hasn't experienced enough of that third dimensional goodness in order for them to want to actually ascend in this lifetime but you made it quite you made it quite plain to me at the time or or more recently that that's not a closed door okay so if people suddenly realize that well actually i might not want to continue to learn at 3d and they will be offered the opportunity of a fast track ascension process just like we have so that that that's a rolling ball thing the more people that we wake up and we get on board at the moment the more people move through and it's 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 now reached tip, we're well past the tipping point phase we're seeing all of this kind of lighting up and it's like a popcorn effect going on around the planet and um this is why we're watching in real time the kind of the literal meltdown panic of those you know the the puppeteers of of earth moving you know everything they can into position to attempt to control the movement of this mass wake up but they knew it was coming so i don't know why they're bothering wasting their energy so it's it's more of a it's a numbers game basically sarah what we're doing at the moment is a numbers game of how many people can we wake up in this short period of time if they if they're kind of soul contracted to maybe wake up a bit later then then so be it and we all know somebody who <laughs> was joking about this on saturday the we all know people or at least one person that we wrote off during 2020 is never a they're never going to wake up oh my god you know they'll be asleep forever like why do i waste my breath etc cetera, etc cetera. um you know all of us are human we've all had those judgments on others especially during that period of time during 2020 but all of a sudden i'm seeing these people wake up and it's even caught me by surprise well, it's been interesting it was for me that was a very painful year 2020 because i've become like pretty interesting some sort of born again but you know sort of you know, you know going from let everyone have their view opinion you know just leaving everyone to kind of like you know and and for me that was really about my loved ones you know wanting to you know wake up my loved ones and and it was very painful but there's been even some traction, you know, with my loved ones, you know, observing things. Um, I won't go into yeah. details, but, you know, that's that's been very powerful and very reassuring in a way that kind of all is not wasted somehow. <laughs> Absolutely. One of one of the most interesting things and this this will be this will be hopefully useful information for the people that are tuning in and listening is that we are going to be surrounded, even, even our sleepiest of loved ones by people who are beginning to wake up, but they might not ever necessarily identify with a spiritual pathway like you and I do. Um, you're never going to get them to a unicorn workshop. They're never probably going to be particularly interested in crystals, but they're going to be functioning from an open heart, doing open hearted things rather than functioning from the ego. That's the purpose of this shift from 3D to 5D. It's, it's, it's a movement of vibration and consciousness, but I'm really seeing all of these people functioning at a higher level thinking differently speaking differently acting differently treating themselves differently but they're most of them are completely unaware that anything's occurred or changed they've just made this transition naturally that's from living in a higher frequency environment it's it's a natural evolve but you know it's the evolution of our space that people will rise into this naturally, but they might not even notice that it's going on. It's, it's you know, but also, you know, I didn't necessarily understand that back in 2020, but what I'm feeling now is, you know, that polarization that occurred, it actually was part of the process in the same way, you know, prior to this um, to October 22nd event, we had that yeah. kind of polarization going on. And actually, um, you know, the process that I personally went through was, you know division with my my, my immediate family yeah. um but then what came in was a much greater deeper acceptance and love mm -hmm. and um you know because you know maybe some souls haven't chosen that path and you know who am i to overwrite 
their sole choice, you know. So that was a big learning for me. I, I was never someone to overwrite, but out of love and protection, I kind of jumped into something that kind of wasn't me, but in that moment, but actually, um, you know, it was done out of love, but um, ultimately it's helped me to hold a much deeper space for, for love and acceptance. Absolutely. I think it was, it. we were very torn during that particular year because those of us that could see with clarity were just like, wow, how can, how can we be the only ones that are actually witnessing this from a clear perspective rather than buying the whole fear package and having it, you know, like delivered delivered by courier sort of thing, you know, like hook, line and sinker. Uh, it was, um, we all felt that almost survival-based urgency to wake people up, but it became very apparent very quickly that that was not how it was going to function. It had to go yeah. through an organic process or an inorganic process. And now, now what I'm seeing is, the logic behind the reasoning that that I mean, all of the all of the events on this planet have been pre-orchestrated, and the only way to wake up billions of people is to put them through a process where they eventually see, regardless of what that trigger is on the other side of it. So what we saw and what we endured was highly necessary, yeah. and still to this day, are we seeing all of these events going on around the world? Yes. The more effort that's made to keep humanity in a state of fear the more people wake up so in actual fact it's it's um the longer they do it for the more beneficial it is to us because we see so many people suddenly the veil comes off the third eye and they do actually understand and that's that's an amazing moment that's that's something that we can all kind of have a little bit of a you know we can relish it when it occurs can't we it really is fabulous and I know I know that our intention we had a very loose intention for this podcast today to talk about the current energies and there's been just yeah. so much to chat about that um you know it feels like now is a good moment to talk mm. about that you know we've spoken about the fear that's happening in the world yeah. certainly the acceleration that's happened the acceleration of the acceleration I think I, maybe I even heard yeah. you say the acceleration of the acceleration yeah. of the acceleration yeah. <laughs> you know that's happened since the 22nd um absolutely so, um, yeah the, would you like to talk about what's happening oh what I'm, I'd, I'd love to talk about it I mean the, 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 this is it's a perfect segue into talking about what's happened to our nervous systems um we have been all I'd say right from the beginning of this year, if not before that, our nervous systems have been in a state of like hyper anxiety. I think that's the only way to describe it. When we receive new high frequency energies from the cosmos, our nervous system is aware of it before we physically process it. If you think about what our brain is, it's a multidimensional supercomputer that is completely keyed and wired into everything that's coming in, be it light packages from Helios or be it photo like actual photonic radiation from the sun, as we've all, we all know about all of these sun flares that have been coming through, and they're incredibly powerful. So our poor nervous systems are attempting to keep pace with the speed at which we are progressing. And there's an or, there's an organic ascension process going on, but then there's also people like you and me that are actually forcing it to go through quicker and quicker because that's what's necessary. So when when we receive large high frequency quantities of light, like we did on the twenty second, that comes down through our chakra system. It's absorbed physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and essentially we ground it in when it passes through the body it does mul it does a multitude of different things but ultimately it, it's its job is to create space high frequency space now if there's density within that space it gets booted out and it gets booted out very quickly so the symptoms that we are all feeling and and there's a lot of them since the 22nd have all been because we've all taken in this light at high frequency and made a sudden jump we haven't done a little kind of a little gentle jump we've done a very very sudden jump and covered a lot of space with that jump but like you know big big distance and in order for our bodies to recalibrate 
we have to give ourselves time. We have to give ourselves self-love and nurturing. So all of our, our nervous systems, our physicals are all shouting for assistance because we, we, we've been conditioned to live in 3D at the end of the day and, and we are moving yes. very quickly into this higher frequency and losing all of our old habits, our old thought patterns, the way we speak, the way we act towards ourselves, the way we act towards others is having to be mastered very quickly. So the physical is try it's a little bit like a, a the couch to 5k runner attempting to keep up with a with a trained marathon runner. It's almost like what we're asking our bodies to do. And we are doing it. This is the amazing part about it. We achieved that shift on the 22nd. We've achieved lots of other incredible things over the course of this year. And that's not even beginning to mention what we did in the first decade of this shift since the cosmic moment. But this year has been pivotal. I've never seen anything like it. It's so huge. our nervous <laughs> our nervous systems are lit up like Christmas trees. And it is down to us as individuals to identify the things that we personally need at the moment, like more grounding, more time in nature, more loving thoughts, speech, and and the ingredients for our body, what we what we take in what we put into our body and that's not just physical food that's what we receive from media from tv yes. you know it's our spiritual diet has never been more important at the moment absolutely yeah and the, I, I love that you bring up the deprogramming the of the conditioning you know because that's a huge process and and something that you know it can be hard to see because it becomes an aspect of who we think we are yeah um i you know I'd love to talk about what you said here about the um, booting out of this high frequency and, you know, particularly the base three chakras, you know, because that <laughs> the is the movement chakras. from the 3D into the, you know, into the heart ultimately, mm. um, you know, because that's where we hold all our trauma and, you know, yeah. you've ex shared your experience with the sacral and, and, you know, I think that's what in our current time is being activated, you know, that security, the fear, the de destabilizing us so we feel ungrounded and yeah. we're in our trauma state rather than in our hearts. So mm. um, is that something you can expand upon? Absolutely. I mean, we're all working with the 12, the, the, the Atlantean 12 chakra system now, and we have been since 2014. So what I've seen over and over again is that everybody loves the higher chakras don't they you know the the stellar gateway the soul star all all of the, the transcendent chakras it's not until you start getting to the physical that you have to do some work now as you go down through the chakra system I, I mean i've identified um kind of five chakras that i would regard as problem chakras on the ascension process you've got the third eye you've got the throat you've got the altar major at the back of the neck you've got the solar plexus poor old solar plexus and then you've got the sacral now those are the those are the ones that i see reoccurring issues with so for those of us that really integrated and received that light on the 22nd as if we haven't basically we haven't done the work it's it's going to come up because that's how much we received in such a very very short space of time I mean, it immediately highlight, highlighted to me there was a huge pocket of stored trauma in my sacral that I hadn't even looked at. It probably locked away, far away from me. And and so that that was my personal experience. That's um it had to be that that it had to be done on the day, but for somebody else it might have been a solar plexus issue <clears throat> or or third eye or meridians and nervous system. Whatever what wherever the weak points are it gets highlighted when we receive huge amounts of light like that. Does that make oh, sense? It's interesting. I just have to interrupt. Sorry to interrupt. Um, oh, because the sacral chakra connection with the throat chakra, you know, when you're coughing, as you say this, so you've had some, it, it was interesting that it manifested mm. in the sacral and also at the same time in your throat. You yeah. Know, they're pair chakras, aren't they? They most certainly are. I mean, I'm, I'm finding that the a lot of the, all of the chakras are really intermingled with each other once we move into the higher frequencies and the throat is linked with the heart and the heart is linked with the sacral and the sacral is linked with the throat and also with the third eye and and it, it all becomes one 
And then you look a little bit further on down it, and I can remember reading years ago about the unified chakra column, like chakras that are no longer separate. They are just functioning as one perfect ascension machine, so to speak. So I've had issues with my throat for years. And again, this is all, this is Atlantean collar stuff. Same thing that Diana Cooper made. You might've heard Diana Cooper talking about it is, she told me a story years ago about one of her first talks back in the 90s when nobody was talking about spiritual stuff, let alone getting up on stage and talking about unicorns. And her job was to go and talk to a large group of women at a women's institute. I couldn't think of like a, a, a stonier group of people to talk to. And not only was she talking to them about spiritual stuff, she was broaching the subject of Atlantis, which, I mean how brave is that to stand up and do that and just before she went up and did this speech she lost her voice literally was reduced to a squeak so she had to squeak into the microphone all night talking to these people who were just giving no real feedback about the information that was coming through and so we share a collective stored trauma in the throat especially those of us that experience the fall of Atlantis, because we're given a lovely collar to walk away from with if we actually, if we survived the fall, which many of us did, some of us didn't, we had to leave having signed the contract to operate in a lower frequency. Of course, your throat and my throat and all of the other throats out there are the one physical chakra that people can feel and hear and and receive it's it's a physical physical embodiment of the energy so if you're speaking from the heart via the throat that that contains incredible power and so for years and years and years we had this collar around our neck that was done it was there to stifle our ability to use the throat in its highest format And of course, we've also had many other things occurring in the kind of like the 3D dark ages where we got punished. And again, that would have all been stored within the throat. So lots to come out of that. Wow, amazing. Um, I know that we'd spoken about possibly doing an experiential piece to this podcast today. I don't know if it's it's feeling to you now that you'd still just like to talk because there feels like there's so much to talk about or whatever you want me about you talking about this, this stroke connection yeah. it felt really resonant and really I, I don't know it just brought me into it okay ask now <laughs> so how would you like how would you like to work with the with an expert it's entirely up to, to you Tim I'd really like to hand it over for you to just feel it okay. feels important for the group of listeners I think it'd be really nice to just have a little bit a little look at the throat chakra that's what and I was if, feeling. if you're listening in <laughs> I'm losing my voice look are you? <laughs> I've gone all croaky. <laughs> it's amazing what comes up, isn't it? So as you're listening to this in real time, if you're listening to it a bit later on, just grab yourself a crystal. I don't know whether you can see that. It doesn't have to be big or fancy. It can be any crystal and just begin to begin to focus on your body. As As Sarah and I were talking, you might well have kind of felt or experience things that are coming up again it might have been in the sacral might have been in the solar plexus might have been in the throat might have been in the third eye but we're going to look at the throat so just take a few moments to move into your body make sure that you are fully present here so physically mentally emotionally and spiritually just check in with yourself make sure that you're not wandered off in different directions bring all of yourself back to you and begin to breathe into your heart center take a deep breath in light up your heart center and on the out breath just feel your heart expanding and just do this three times breathe in through your nose light up the heart breathe out And on the third in breath and out breath, you will now be sat within your own beautiful iridescent bubble of heart light. Now, you might be receiving a message from your throat. 
So as you are bathing within the iridescence of your heart center, just bring your attention to your shining, radiant blue throat chakra. And if any blockages or any, maybe you might be able to see old symbols or an old rope mark maybe around your throat chakra at this time, just bring the crystal to the front. Just bring it and hold it over your throat chakra. And as you do this, just ask your throat what it wants to release, what it wishes to be free from. And with your intention and your attention upon your throat, you'll begin to see or maybe feel the throat glowing very brightly. The royal blue turns to bright electric blue. And just be aware that you are being joined by Archangel Michael. Who is standing directly behind you and just placing his hands gently upon your shoulders. So relax in his presence, Archangel Michael is a familiar and very, very friendly being of light, but also carries immense power, immense courage. And he oversees the development of the throat chakra and anything else that might be going on. So just at the moment, feel Michael's hands upon your shoulders. And then with his permission or your permission, begins to work upon the throat. You might feel a bit of movement, a bit of activity, just either on the front and the back. And if you have a crystal, Archangel Michael is allowing his beautiful royal blue light to flood through the crystal into the throat. Any old wounds or any old traumas or symbols or past life contracts or remnants or shadows of the Atlantean collar are being removed now. And gentle healing is taking place. All of this contained within the cocoon of your heart light. And for everyone tuning in this morning, Archangel Michael is offering you a handcrafted diamond shaped golden symbol. And this is the symbol that was created for the Atlantean crystalline codes, and it's called Kos. And he's offering to light this up in the center of your throat for you now. So just feel any old trauma, any old stuck energy just being removed. And if you feel guided to do so, just say the word cos, 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 either out loud or just in your head with gentle power and authority. And just feel your throat clearing completely. And Archangel Michael steps back now. And he's just reminding you that any further work that needs doing upon the throat chakra, he will join you in an instant. All you need to do is ask. So take another deep breath now into your heart center, just thanking Archangel Michael for his presence. Breathe in through your nose. Out through your mouth. Just being aware of your heart bubble still surrounding you, you can stay in that for as long as you like. When you're ready, open your eyes. Might just take a few moments also to ground in by your earth star chakra. Just make sure you're all grounded in by the soles of your feet. 
And many of you will probably continue to feel the presence of Archangel Michael with you for some time. Just bring yourselves back, back to wherever you are in your room and open your eyes. Thank you so much, Tim. Wow, my, my voice pleasure. is sounding different. Yeah. <laughs> that felt very powerful. You will notice an immediate shift in the resonance of your throat. I think I needed to do that this morning. You need to do that. Everybody, you can never do too much of that, that clearing, especially, or even acknowledging what might be the blockage in there. And that kind of same application of crystal work can work for any chakra. It can work for the, the third eye or the solar plexus or the sacral or any <clears throat> any of the other chakras that might be presenting themselves to you at this time. Thank you so much for, for sharing that with us. That felt oh, really, really pleasure. important. Yeah, my pleasure. Today. Very happy to do that anytime. Thank you. So was there anything else that you'd like to share today? Is there anything else that feels important to bring through? We are now in the run up to the December solstice. So again, we are preparing for more integration. We've got the 12-12 event, and then we've got the, the in, in the Northern Hemisphere, the winter solstice and the South, the summer solstice. It's going to be powerful, okay? Just like every other event that's occurred during the course of this year, it's going to be powerful. But I do believe that we've done the bulk of our light integration for the year what we're going to be doing is putting what we have received into coherent action so it's a once we've done our integrating once we've done our you know done what we need to do for ourselves next year the winter solstice and next year is going to be about creating from a higher frequency that's what i'm seeing, seeing very clearly incredible incredible stuff that um and how can people connect with you? I know most people will know who you are, but I will be sharing this with the People's Health Alliance and other in other yeah. places that maybe people don't know who you are. So um, I'll share any any links in the description oh, of this thank video. You. I am um, had to think I had <laughs> recall then what my what my web page was. It's www.timwild.com. And um, that's that's my website. I'm available on Tim Wild Practical Ascension on Facebook and YouTube and on Tim Wild Ascension on Instagram. So if you if you just if you if you're struggling to find it, put my name into Google and you. You'll, and I'll, you'll... I'll pop it under the video so so people will find you and, and oh, do connect you. in with Tim because he's been doing some incredible work. And um, Tim, I'd be most grateful if you could put the link to the to the podcast um, underneath your the video as well, because oh, absolutely, I'm I'm interviewing some incredible people, and we you know it's all about this ascension process, you know, shifting yeah. into the new earth. So I'm sure a lot of your listeners well, thank... would love to to listen in as well. So very much so. Thank you for doing this work, Sarah. It's incredibly important, and and whenever we have these conversations, something pertinent comes up. So, you know, this could be a catalyst. It could be a trigger for somebody listening in, somebody who might not have even acknowledged their process will have heard you and I talking. And it, it, it could one one person waking up is, is another has has a rolling ball effect. It's it's such important work. So thank you for doing it. Oh, and thank you for, for all that you do and all that you are, you know, just holding and bringing in such That's high it. frequency energy that we're just also immensely grateful oh bless you um, thank you it's so been an much. absolute and, and, pleasure oh it has been a pleasure and thank you everyone for listening in um do tune in to some more new earth podcasts bye for mm. now everyone see you soon lots of love hello beautiful people